Now with that, I want to introduce a game-changing group uh, called edX. And Anat Argawal is going to come to the stage, who's the CEO, and they're doing, a, they have a major MOOC and a consortium approach, and he's going to tell you about how they're educating the world. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Teresa. I'm really delighted to, uh, to be here. It's really interesting to see how uh, everything in the world around us has changed over the past few hundred years, whether it's telecommunications, whether it's uh, healthcare. But what is amazing is that education has remained the same. 300 years ago, you saw the same old classrooms with teachers. And today, you see the same old, same old. So what you see here as an example, this is actually not a rock concert. And uh, the person up in the front is not Miley Cyrus. What this is is a classroom, believe it or not, at the Obafemi Ovalovo University in Nigeria. And we've all heard of distance education, but the people in the back here, I think, are undergoing long distance education. And uh, in large parts of the world, there's a real challenge as, as, as people just don't have access to uh, great education or educational resources. The world around us has changed. This is how people learn today. This is my 15-year-old uh, daughter. And if you uh, see how they learn, uh, their attention spans are different. They completely like to do things online. And in this case, uh, uh, you know, in this case, she has one screen in front of her, but usually she has three screens, an iPad, her laptop, and a cell phone. And so uh, our learners learn completely differently. They want to be flexible, but our education system has just not changed. So edX is a nonprofit venture, and we are looking to reinvent education. We partner with some of the world's best universities, like uh, MIT in Harvard and Tsinghua in China, IIT Bombay in India, Berkeley in the uh, California area, and offer these great courses online called MOOCs, massive open online courses that learners all over the world can take for free. And we have a three-part mission. We want to increase access to education for students around the world. We also want to improve campus education by bringing in online technology and marrying it with in-person help from teachers. And then we want to do research on the big data that we're gathering. And the next uh, seven or eight minutes, I'll give you a few quick vignettes of how we are accomplishing each of these three missions with really cloud computing at, at the heart of it. And we're just absolutely delighted to be partnered with uh, Amazon to help us accomplish these incredible goals. Just as an example, when we launched our first course as a MOOC on uh, edX, that we worked with Amazon, and we expected maybe 1,000 students to come take our online course two years ago. Not much marketing. We had 10,000 students sign up in the first hour. And before we knew it, we had 155,000 students sign up from 162 countries. And uh, thank God for the elasticity of the cloud that we were able to really ramp up the, the computing services and, uh, and be able to support this large number of students taking this MIT hard course on uh, circuits and electronics. Despite the big numbers, it is incredible to see the learners, uh, the individual learners all around the world who are taking these free courses and whose lives we're able to touch. My favorite on the top right-hand corner, uh, my right, is uh, Kush Bhakt. She's a uh, housewife in Pakistan. Uh, she was married uh, early, and so she could not f finish her education beyond uh, ninth grade. Today she writes to us and tells us that I have a really supportive husband. I'm now able to take courses, so she's taking justice from uh, Mike Sandel out of Harvard and other courses, and she's getting back education using the whole online model. So the reach of these online courses, again, through the cloud all around the world, is just absolutely amazing, and we hear stories like this almost every, almost every day. Um, our impact has been, uh, and the reach has been uh, quite extraordinary. Today, since launching two years ago, um, after having been founded by MIT and Harvard as a nonprofit venture, um, edX has uh, over 2.5 million students from every single country in the world. We are partnered with about um, 55 institutions from uh, around the world, and uh, we have uh, about 200 courses that you can go in and take for free. So go to edX.org, takes you seconds to sign up, and you can start off taking, for example, 
Introduction to Biology from uh, Eric Lander, who's the father of the Human Genome Project. Or you can take uh, astro, uh, as astronomy and physics from Brian Schmidt, the Nobel laureate from the uh, Australian National University. A pretty, uh, pretty mind-boggling experience. We've also opened this platform. As I mentioned earlier, we are nonprofit. So we made our platform and technology for online learning freely available to anybody. And we, um, and we let that out as open edX. And since that time, the adoption of the learning system has been pretty amazing. So the way it works is we made the platform open, and all our hosting scripts and so on on Amazon were all open source. We made them freely available. And it, pretty much anybody in the world can now take our software and create similar environments within their nations or within the university. One of our closest partners is Stanford University. Uh, they are partnered with us, and they made public a large number of hosting scripts for Amazon. A number of nations are adopting us. So uh, China, for example, launched Shuetang X, which stands for School X in uh, Mandarin. And there, the Ministry of Education partnered with Tsinghua to launch a national learning platform. Another example, France University de Numerique from France launched, uh, again, an online platform for the country. Queen Rania from Jordan launched Edrock which is a learning platform for all of the Middle East, and again, based on open edX. So the impact of this online model is happening not just through edX.org, but also through the open source platform that can now be adopted. And, uh, and in many places, uh, individuals say that have been able to set it up um, within hours and get going, uh, creating a platform for themselves. Uh, a typical online course replaces a lecture with what we call a learning sequence. So instead of sitting in class for a one hour lecture or whatever, you watch videos, short videos interleaved with interactive exercises. So you watch a video and then you go and engage with some uh, exercise. There are discussion forums, we bring the social into the classroom and we can automatically grade uh, a large number of types of problems, equations, chemical equations, graph problems. Uh, we're now even able to grade open response questions like essays, uh, both through peer grading and also through uh, what we call artificial intelligence assessment that is based on uh, machine learning technology. We're also bringing learning back into the classroom. What you see here is a classroom at uh, San Jose State University. Here, we work with San Jose State, and they created a blended model where they brought in content from uh, courses running on edX from our partner universities, where the students in class would watch videos before they came to class and do the exercises online. And within class, they would have discussions with groups of three, as you see here, or they would also have discussions with the professor, where Professor, in this case, Khosrow Gadiri, would help them with uh, difficult issues that they may have faced while they were going through the, uh, the lessons. And this, in this model, with the electronic circuits class that they piloted at San Jose, uh, just absolutely staggering results. Traditionally, this course had a 40% uh, failure rate semester upon semester. And with this blended model, the failure rate fell to 9%. You don't see such vast improvements in learning. Uh, typically, you see more, a fewer percent. And they've repeated this experiment multiple times. And now we're doing the same pilot across the whole California State University system. And the third part of our mission, as I mentioned, was research uh, uh, with data. So uh, as learners learn, we have these millions of learners all over the world, we are gathering the big data for learning. So we track every mouse click. When did they start watching a video? At what time did they watch it? Where in the world are they coming from? When did they, when did they stop? When did they start an exercise? How long did they take? How much are they engaged? What resources are they using? Are they using the textbook before an exam? What resource did they use just before they got an answer right after having got it wrong many times? And we know every, we're collecting all of this data. And what you see here is the amount of data we've gathered already in the space of uh, 18 months. Today, we have uh, over 3 billion records of data. And if each record is about a kilobyte or a couple of kilobytes, you're talking about terabytes of data of learning, rich learning data. We're a nonprofit and we share this data with our university partners who are doing research on how students learn. We can answer some really incredible questions. 
So for example, one question that people have always asked is how long should videos be? Okay, so when you went to classrooms, you sat in classes for an hour. Why an hour? Why not two hours? Why not 10 minutes? It was just an hour. I'm not sure how they picked an hour. Similarly, how long should videos be in these online courses? Maybe two minutes, 10 minutes, or should it be two hours? And so here again, using data mining, Philip Gore did a study where the graph here shows the video lengths on the x-axis, three minutes, six minutes, nine minutes, and so on, and student engagement on the y-axis. And uh, you see a remarkable result. Using data mining, he demonstrated that six minutes was the magical video length. Maximum student engagement happened when videos were six minutes long. Students watched the whole six-minute video. But when videos got longer, let's say they went up to 40 minutes, then student engagement actually went down. And they would watch a 40-minute video for just two minutes. So we can now mine all of this data, and we're getting insights into, uh, into learning. And our hope is that this will really enhance learning both within the classroom and worldwide. Thank you.